Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you guys how to use the TD Ameritrade API streamer to extract options on futures. If this is your first time watching the video on using this API, please also see the introduction video, which I show you how to log in and log out. But in this video, I just wanna focus on the JSON block and the functions required to extract these options. So I built a wrapper on the JSON block. So it'll essentially be quotes for the options on the futures. So that's the service. Command is subscription or subs. We pass in a random ID along with our account and source. For the key, it's our option symbol. And in order to get that, you can go to thinkorswim. So if we take a look at an example, all right, so here's an example of the eMini S&P 500 options. So once you open the options chain, we will need to pass on this option name for this options chain along with the strike. So if we go back to our script, I have provided a similar example. So it'll start with dot forward slash the options chain, whether it's a call or a put and the strike. So we need to pass that in as our symbol. And for the fields, I'm requesting all 36. However, not all of these return. And I think they limited this service. Now to extract the options, I built a separate function, which is called get all future options. We don't have any parameters to pass in. It'll start off by listing the names in the environment called API data, which I sent all the messages we get from our streamer into this environment. So I'm searching through this list to extract all the messages that have data, and then I'm gonna pass that as a list into this function. So for each of these messages, I'm just gonna extract the content and return that as a data frame. So this list contains all the data. I'm gonna go ahead and row bind the results using our bind list. I'm gonna get rid of all the empty cases, return that as a data frame, format the column names, and I start off by formatting the columns that have timestamps, and that's the expiration date, the quote time, and the trade time. Now I use the documentation in order to replace these column names, but I think the documentation is a little bit outdated as some of these didn't match up, but I'm pretty confident that this is the enumeration, but just know that this might change in the future. So when we get data from the streamer, it'll assign each column a number, and then I use the documentation to match that number to the correct value. And as I previously mentioned, not all 36 columns get returned. So I think this is limited to just a couple. So I'm replacing all the column names and I'm gonna add two columns which contain the net change in points and the percentage change. And these are both for the options. Now, since this is a streamer, you'll get multiple cases of the same strike. So I just wanna limit the cases. And then finally, just return that as a data frame. Now, in order to use the service, I built a separate R script. And here we start off by sourcing all of our functions and our JSON blocks. We're gonna establish a connection, get the ready state, for every message we receive from the streamer, I'm gonna display that out in the console. Same thing when we close our connection. I'm gonna send my login block. I'm gonna create a new environment to send all these messages to. I'm gonna replace my on message block to not only print out the message out in the console, but to assign all the messages we receive into this API data environment. Now, in order to extract multiple strikes, here I'm just gonna create a range or a sequence from 4,500 to 4,525 in intervals of five. So I'm gonna pass all these strikes and build JSON blocks. And you need to pass in the option chain symbol along with whether these are calls or puts. So this will build the JSON blocks for these strikes. And then I'm gonna use a for loop and request data for all those strikes. After we get the data, I'm just gonna go ahead and log out and close the connection. So let's go through an example. I'm gonna source in my functions, establish a connection, get the ready state, assign the on message and on close, log in, create a new environment, replace that on message block. I'm gonna create a sequence of strikes, build the JSON blocks for those strikes and use that for loop to request data for those strikes. Now, if we take a look at our console, once we start receiving data, I'm just gonna go ahead and close the connection. Since this is a streamer service, it'll just continuously update any changes for those options that you requested. So if you want quotes for these strikes, you could just leave this running. Otherwise, you can just log out and close the connection. I'm going to minimize this. Now I'm just going to extract all the data that we got and save it into this variable called options table. So if we take a look at that table. All right, so since this is a streaming service, you will notice that we get multiple entries for the same strike. And that's just because it's updating one of these columns. So for example, for the 4500 strike, we get our initial quote. And here we see the changes. So it looks like the bid and the ask change for this particular row and also the bid and the ask size. So for every row, you'll see the changes for a particular column and you'll get a timestamp that goes along with the change. But if you just wanna extract that very initial quote, I'm just gonna subset the table to include complete cases. So if we go back to our script, that's done by this very next line. And if we take a look at that table, 
Here are the six different strikes we requested data for, along with their columns. So here we have the bid and the ask, the last price, the bid and the ask size, the ask and bid ID for the exchanges, the volume, the last size, the quote and last trade times, previous close, the exchange ID, a description, the open interest, the mark price of the option, the point value, the settlement price, the previous day, the underlying symbol, the strike, the expiration date and time, the option type, which are weeklies, the high price, the low price, the open price, the net change in points, and also the percentage change. So it really depends on what you want to use the streamer for. If you just want to collect the data and save it to a database, I would recommend you use this table. Otherwise, if you just want to stream all the strikes, you can use the previous table I displayed. But that said, this concludes the video, guys. I really hope this was useful information. I'll go ahead and add these scripts onto the Patreon. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.